with talk show host Tamron Hall and chef Liz Styling. We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> it's Thursday, September 5th, 2024. Hey. Welcome to the show, everybody. Yeah. Hey, um, exciting news in tennis yesterday. Hey, tell me. My guy, Yannick Sinner, made it to the semifinals. Okay. And the two Americans, um, what was it? Yeah. Taylor. Uh, Fritz and Tiafu are going to play uh, in the semifinals, so it's going to be at least one American. At least one American will be in the final. And in women's, in women's, Pagula, the American, got to the semifinals. And Navarro is also in the semifinals. They don't meet, they don't play each other. They, in, in the semis, they will meet, if they both win, in the final. Wow. Yeah. Is this accurate, the time? It's 12 a.m. No, no, I doubt that. It's got to be p.m. Right? PM. Yeah, I'm sure. It's got to be p.m. It's got to be sure. I'm They're sure. playing in the afternoon. They're not playing it's at 12 a.m. midnight. Eastern. No, I don't think they are. Okay, yeah. it says <laughs> it says, it says, it says, it says they're playing at midnight tonight. I was like, although, oh, spooky! Although, Meet me at the graveyard at midnight, and we'll play for all the marbles. Although if they if they started at 8 at p.m., they definitely will go into the, these guys. They play a long time. Yeah, of course. It's not like one of our tennis match. No. <laughs> Mark, when Mark and I play tennis, it's over, like, you before, know what they it's over do? before we get there. They should literally sell tickets uh, to charity for us playing tennis because it's like a night of comedy. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen two, and you're really, I think. I look like I look like I know what I'm doing, but the ball goes crazy. Places. No, but I think that you're actually <sighs> really good, but your doubles partner has really hamstrung you with being terrible and so i'm it's so like, it's, bad that you it's the start reverse it's like the reverse here <laughs> like you're like you're no, you're the stop. you're the ace no i won't say that it, never but it, but it is quite like we're quite comical together because i'm so bad that it makes him laugh <laughs> and then he also becomes bad <laughs> oh but some some doubles uh, wife and husband teams, they, oh. get, they get into it. Oh, that it can get ugly. We just laugh. Yeah, that it should be fun. Yeah, yeah. no, we, we just laugh. We don't get, um, that, that, that other couple we played, <laughs> she was not nice to him at all. I was very concerned yeah. for their oh, yeah. marriage. Yeah. Get, I was excited. actually concerned for their marriage. Uh, we were like, it's okay. It's okay, we, we, we don't more. care. <laughs> this does not Look matter. Look at how much we suck and we're still yeah. married. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> we did all come together in the end, though, for a nice group photo. Yeah. Where Mark and I are in the middle, and they are on on other <laughs> side. Other side. And they won. And they beat, and they beat us. us. But she they was not happy. They trounced us. She was but not happy. But it was not enough <laughs> yeah. of a trouncing. But I love tennis. It's a great sport. Um, I'm sorry if I'm like if I seem a little off. I had dental work yesterday. Oh. Which um. Which, you know, you don't feel as it's happening because they numb you. Yeah. And I love my dentist. I love, I want to give him a shout out because he's the greatest, Dr. Mark Lowenberg. He's great. The greatest, the greatest dentist. Yeah. I have a crush on my dentist. <laughs> there, I said, I happily admit <laughs> to being in love with my dentist. And he's I, a handsome, I have a crush on him too. I know. He's a handsome man. <laughs> he's handsome. He's, he's funny. funny. He's intelligent. Right. He's an Excellent dentist, but he makes it so like pain free while it's happening that it's not until you wake up the next morning and you're like, Yeah, you I came feel in. Like well, you, you came in yesterday afternoon, and you're like, ah, ah. Well, I know my face was numb. Yeah. Oh, right. So I was talking, yeah, you know, I was yeah. like <laughs> trying to communicate, trying to tell Mark things about the rest of my day because I had to run home and then run back out, yeah. but I could not form a sentence. So, um, how's it feeling now? Sore? Just sore. 
But my teeth look cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like, you know, when your fillings have to be replaced, I guess there's like we're old... At that, we're getting to that age. Yeah, it's like 1970s fillings, which, right. you know... Nice, not, good amount... Disco of, fillings, yeah. as I like to call them. Mer Back when they used to put lead in your mouth. Yeah, mer mercury and lead. Yeah, yeah. there are all kinds yeah. of things that are bad good for stuff. you. Good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, there's something new happening in schools. Uh, our kids are mostly out of school. Joaquin's a senior in college, which I can't believe it. Um, but uh, schools are now restricting cell phone use. And a lot... <laughs> Jen, you were saying that Caden uh, had to check his cell phone at the door. Drop it in a pouch when he goes into the school. Drop it in a pouch. Yeah. It's Good. like going to a con like certain comedians and certain. And how's he? How is he dealing it. with that? I mean, I love it, and he was telling me yesterday how great his teacher, like something his teacher said, and I said, "Guess you're paying attention." Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. I, love it. I think it's yeah. amazing. I wish, I mean, uh, I, I wish, say, like, our kids are just old, like, just old enough where cell phones had not become the distraction that they have become. Yep. You know, like, our kids sort of had dumb smartphones. They. A flip phone. Uh, yeah, they had flip yeah. phones. So it was not like the this. ones you pulled the antenna out with your, with your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have that video of Lola because we made our kids wait until they had to go on, on a the bus, big bus yeah. up to the Bronx to go to school. So once they were once they were on the big bus, they needed a or, phone. Or we thought they needed a phone. Well, no, just in case. I mean, uh, well, nothing twice, happened. Well, twice, <laughs> twice the bus broke down. Yeah, well, I, I, my bus broke down when I went to school. Nothing happened. <laughs> You went to school in Lebanon, Illinois. Uh, yeah, they're on. They're on the highway. They would make it home. She knows where she lives. <laughs> anyway, I have a great video. And of all her. the people videotaping like concerts and like fireworks and like um, you're never gonna look at that again. You don't. Guess what? I don't want to see it. Wait, if you show, hey, look at the fireworks I saw, or look at this great, I don't, I don't care. I, I don't want to watch your video of your phone. Just like, just like I don't want to see your wedding video. I don't care. I, re I, I barely wanted to be there in the first place. Be in the moment. Let your eyeballs, let your eyeballs remember and your brain remember what's happening. You shot a video of me dancing on stage with Madonna. Okay, that was special. And I have watched that. Well, can I tell you something? The, can the, I tell you something? The two million <laughs> views on my Instagram it got. One million of those but views can I tell are you from something? me. Okay. But I would have much preferred not having to do that and actually watch you do it and remember it because I was looking at it through this stupid little lens, <laughs> just shaking because I needed to get it right. I would have loved to just enjoyed watching you that. So I missed out. You you benefited from it, but I missed out. <laughs> Well, consider it payback. <laughs> consider that one video payback for every other video that exists of you and our family and our <laughs> children and our parents. And so it's like one. No. It's one to eight hundred thousand. This is I what have I'm thinking. Down no. on every Here's other what thing. I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. Right? Like back in the day when you had to hold the camcorder. Right, you had to do that thing. Those are like a, a, a birthday and, and, and candles and certain major milestones. That's great. You did a minute and a half, two minutes, but now people are just willy nilly videotaping everything and it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. <laughs>
Nothing, nothing matters. Oh yeah, you know what? I saw this comedian. This, I love. I, I would love to give credit, but I don't remember it. You know, when our grandparents showed us photos of like, wow, this was the war, or this is when we moved here, and this is a picture next to the Eiffel Tower. Cool. Can you imagine what like our grandkids if they got into our phone and well, looked especially at? Especially your phone, because your phone is riddled with selfies. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> yes, it no, is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's. We'll pull oh, it out. Yes, it is. Tomorrow we'll pull out. Pull see, out. So, see out the selfies. But no, he's going to go delete all of the selfies. <laughs> I know because I was looking for his phone for some vacation photos of us. But you know what I've never. You know what I've like. Our grandkids were like, oh, look at what I ate at this restaurant. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares what you ate at a restaurant? I don't care. No one cares. You know what our, our grandkids will look at? Oh, here's, here's Nono getting out of the ice plunge. That's cool. Here's Nono in a bathing suit getting out of the ice plunge. That's cool. Here's Nono flexing his muscles getting out of the ice plunge. That's super cool. <laughs> that's super cool. Because that's an event. I almost died in that place. That was like me going to war. Look at Nono going to war. He almost died in this ice plunge thing. Every day. Nothing matters. <laughs> on your phone. Nothing matters on your phone. Every single day of your Where's vacation. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? <laughs> I miss my phone. Where's my phone? <laughs> Every single day of the vacation is a parade of Mark taking selfies of himself. How in the dare ice you? How, those weren't me. Those are other people taking. Those. We have a community of ice plungers that we take photos of each other because it's with some, because that could be my last moment on Earth. <laughs> my heart could seize up. I could die. And then what would you? Say? What say you to that? Well, the first thing I would do. First thing I would do is get rid of the ice plunge. <laughs> Moment. You know what? Take those phones away from those kids. Throw them away. <laughs> Throw them away. Hey, listen, yesterday, yes. traffic was snarled. Traffic was snarled. The Midtown Tunnel. Oh, the no. Midtown Tunnel. You know how it goes underwater? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some, they were doing some work above it. I'm not yeah. sure what they were doing. Drilling. And they drilled. They drilled a hole. And it went through, and here we have some video. Oh, that is your biggest nightmare. That's my biggest nightmare. I'm having an anxiety attack Water. just now. Can you imagine? So they closed it. They closed it up. Hours, they yeah. closed it for a few hours. But the Midtown Tunnel, even on a good day, is bad traffic. Just getting down there. I'm just, just getting... picturing being the people in the tunnel. It starts raining on you. I'd be like, why is there water coming into this place? <laughs> and I would not like that at all. I would get out and I would get out and run. Were they, were they able to fix? They it? fixed yeah. it. They put they some um, some glue and some. <laughs> They're doing. <laughs> Caulking, <laughs> caulk, they just, just did that stuff. A little of the foam. The foam. <laughs> the foam. They went in there with the foam. They were like, this should hold. <laughs> um, so speaking of snarling traffic, there's a traveling installation of 100 life-size elephants that will offer perspective on how big a hundred life-size elephants are. Because I know what you're thinking, because I myself had this thought this morning. I wonder what a hundred life-size elephants looks like. <laughs> will they put them in a room and we all have to go there? I'm like, are we gonna talk about the elephant in the They're room? They're coming. <laughs> Dad joke. Don't encourage his dad. You know what you are? You are all his enablers. That's what you are. Uh, no, they're coming to the Meatpacking District. So you're lucky you. You guys are here in New York today. Uh, oh, actually, too bad. It's going to be here tomorrow. So if you're in town for the day. But if you're That's spending cool. the weekend in New York, uh, it will be in the Meatpacking District on Friday right. before spending a year traveling throughout the country. Oh, so nice. you, yeah. if you if you are like me, if you are like me and want to see what a hundred life-size elephants looks like in real life and don't have the time to get to uh, a safari. <laughs> Just go to the meatpacking district. They're going to be right there. You can eyeball them and say, got it. Now I know. And hey, the weather, another beautiful day today here in New York City. High of 77. Oh, 
77 is the perfect temperature in New York because that means it's going to be 82 by the time you step outside and, the, and all the concrete and all the soup starts boiling up. But that's perfect, 77. Okay. It still feels chilly to me. This morning felt chilly. It's changing. Yeah. It's changing. It's it's I can smell it. I can smell the fall smell in fall. the air. Which means we will have second summer in like a week. There is, you know. Oh yeah, it's getting warmer yeah. near uh, the start of next week. It's going to be in the 80s. What did I say? Yep. Don't get fooled. Don't swap out your wardrobe yet. Because we will have second summer followed by third summer, which usually happens December. in mid <laughs> to late October. Yeah. yeah then there's pre-fall. And then pre-fall lasts 24 hours and then into winter. It's just, those are the seasons. We have summer. We have summer, second summer, fake out fall, followed by third summer, followed by fall for 24 hours directly into winter. Those are the 12 seasons of New York. That's what we have. You were going to rail about phones. I'm going off on the seasons. <laughs> I love a good rant. Yes, I love a rant. Thursday. We're ranting like, today. Ah, felt good. You know what? Because we got sleep last night. That's right. <laughs> Except for when Chewy... <laughs> Chewy. Chewy will, f if, there, if there's a remote control anywhere on the bed, she, will, she likes to sleep on the remote control. Is it the warmth? I don't know what it is. I think maybe it's a sign that you should take the remote that you clutch in your hand. And throw it across the room. Just put it on its stand instead of when you turn it the off. It stands on your side. So, so. I can't reach that far. Take your long arms, reach <laughs> over me, and put it on the stand. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so she rolled over on the bed last night and turned on the TV at full volume at one o'clock in the morning, scaring us both to death. I'm like, wow. And then we can't find the remote. It's underneath Because she's on top of the remote. <laughs> Anyway, we've got a huge show today. Carrie Coon is here. Daniel Day Kim is here. Plus, listen to this. We're going to cook with Tamron Hall. Yeah. He's going to share a recipe for herb, uh, herb, <laughs> herb, herb, herb roasted rack of pork. <laughs> or herb roasted. No, but we were just in... Uh, uh, a place where people say herbs, herbs. instead of herbs. herbs. Yes. Yeah. So everything is herb I, Yeah, that is true. Yeah. It's very British. Uh, all right. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to play. Okay. There, that was a very masculine stump mark. I felt like the guys were more into it than the girls. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, yeah. Let's say hello to Carol Kaminsky from Kalkaska, Michigan, who watches the show on WWTV. She says she wants to stump me so she can see the pure joy on Kelly's face when she wins the mug. It is pure joy. All right, Carol. A loss for Mark is a win for us all. <laughs> Good morning, Carol. How are you? Good morning. I'm great. How's Michigan today? Michigan is beautiful. It's a gorgeous day here. Go blue. You No, green. <laughs> All right, it's starting already. Yeah. Well, you know how this game works. You've given us two statements. One is true, one is false. I have 60 seconds to decide which statement is true. And if you stump me, you'll win this. Oh. <laughs> and that. All right, Michigan Stater, here we go. Here are your two statements. I won a $10,000 jackpot at a casino. Oh. Or I learned to ride a unicycle. All right, let's get into the jackpot first. What were you playing? Um, it was a slot machine. It was? Yeah. It was a slot machine. OK, cool. Um, had, where, where was Yeah, this? where was this? Uh, it was at Turtle Creek Casino, just down about 25 miles from where I live. Okay. All right. Had you been playing slots for a long time? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you probably broke even? 
Oh, I think I, I was uh, quite a bit ahead. Okay, good. Okay, good. good. I like to hear that. Tell me about the, the unicycle. What was the hardest thing to, to do to learn it, and why did you learn how to ride a unicycle? Well, it was when I was a teenager, and my dad brought it home and challenged me to ride it. And um, it wasn't a very cool thing back in that day to ride a unicycle, so I learned under the cover of darkness <laughs> so my friends wouldn't see me. I get it. <laughs> she can only ride unicycle in the dark. Yeah. Exactly. It's like a guy riding a moped. Yeah. Same thing. It's always interesting when you see people on unicycles because they get up and, and they and, like, and they kind of do that. Yeah, it's like a. Okay. <laughs> I tried to I tried to learn to ride one once and it was a disaster. Here's what I think, Carol. Back in the day, you were in Michigan, beautiful, crispy fall, Michigan, and Dad brought home a unicycle, and you said, you know what? I'm gonna learn how to ride it, but just in my garage or in my basement or in my basement because people have basements in Michigan. And that's what I think is the truth. You learned how to ride a unicycle. That's correct, except it wasn't in my basement. <laughs> that's correct, but what? It wasn't in my basement. Well, I'm, I listen, I'm running the game here. I get this, I get some, it's, in, it's a fantasy in my head. You want me to continue with my fantasy? Seems like I get half a mug for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She should get the handle at least. Well, I'm sorry, not really, that you didn't win a mug or a t-shirt, but, but you still have a chance to win a valuable trip. It's time for Great Getaways Travel Ooh! Trivia. Spin that wheel to see what Carol's playing for. Oh, okay, you're playing for a trip for two to the St. James's Club and Villas in Antigua. Seven days, six nights, and a royal suite. It's all inclusive. It's a prize valued at $8,200. Carol, you have 20 seconds and only one guess. Good luck. All right, Carol, here we go. On yesterday's show, we talked with Elizabeth Olson. What did Elizabeth say she had to remove from her boss's home when she worked for a realtor? They were fur pillows. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Congratulations. You and a guest will enjoy seven days and six nights at the St. James's Club Antigua. Renowned as Antigua's most famous address, St. James's Club is the ultimate Caribbean hideaway. Enjoy all-inclusive dining and drinks, two white sand beaches, an indulgent spa, and more as you explore the palm-fringed shores of a stunning 100-acre peninsula. Your prize is valued at approximately $8,200. You know, I, all the times I've seen that travel package, I yeah. just discovered the waterfall pool. Yeah. And there is nothing as glamorous as a waterfall pool. Yeah. Carol, Island or mainland, Carol that's had, it. Carol had one in her basement. <laughs> in my fantasy, she did. Hey, Carol, just, just, yeah. so what was in those fur pillows for an extra little bonus prize here? What was in those fur pillows? Bed bug. That's correct. Yeah. What are you going to do for Carol? I might, I might send her the handle of the mug. <laughs> we'll see. We'll keep you posted. <laughs> Carol, congratulations. Now you get to make the day of a lucky member of our studio audience who will receive a Typher Dome air fryer valued at approximately $500. So please pick a number between 1 and 169. Let's go with 73. 73. <laughs> Coming up next, Carrie Coon.
like I've had a lot of lobster rolls, <laughs> but I had never really had an authentic lobster. Did you have it in Maine or in New Hampshire? I had it in Maine. Yeah. Wait, wait let lobster. me finish. And New Hampshire. <laughs> using that music because it's like flashback videos? Is that why we're using music from a, a children's pageant show from the 1970s? We just thought it was silly. Oh, okay. Yeah, Thank it you, Gelman. Yeah. It is, in fact, silly. All right. She's the star of stage and screen whose work includes The Leftovers and her Emmy-nominated role in The Gilded Age. Now she stars in the new film, His Three Daughters. Please welcome back to the show, Carrie Coon. <laughs> period costume. Yes. You are very uh, fashion Thank forward. Thank you. I'm much yeah. more comfortable this way. It takes yes. a village. I can't do this by myself. I have clothes from graduate school. Yeah. Are you in the middle of shooting the yes, Gilded I Age am. right now? Yes, I oh am. My in the gosh. middle of things. It's been a very busy week. We just got back from London from promoting the film, and yeah. then I was shooting before that and shooting after, and wow. we were in Troy and Albany. We're going to Newport. It's crazy. It's great. So yeah. you, uh, you, we, uh, congratulations are in <coughs> order. I mentioned it. You're Emmy nominated yes. for the Gilded Age. Yes. It's amazing. And, and your husband, Tracy Letts, yes. is also nominated Sneaky as well. Sneaky guest star nominee. Yeah. Incredible. But you know the... Thank you. Yeah. Very exciting. The Creative Arts Emmys, where they award all the guilds, are the weekend before. Okay. Uh -huh. Which is this coming weekend. So he's going alone. I can't go with him. Oh. Because yeah. I'm going to Ohio. Okay. I'm going home because my sister, my sister-in-law, Alex Kuhn, runs the Maslin Museum of Art. And she has a Gilded Age exhibit, and I'm making a public appearance. Yes. Amazing. Wow. Yes, I know. It's so exciting. That's so nice. She actually has some costumes from the show. HBO lent her some costumes from the show. And I'm taking my kids. They're going to see their cousins and my new baby, Elmer, who was born in the driveway a few months ago. Oh my god! Very dramatic entrance into the world. And um, and so Tracy's going alone. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> to his Emmys. Yeah. But that's okay. He'll be all right. Well, he was yeah. great in that show, guy. winning time. He now. was. Yes, he really was. That's He's a, great. That's a, yeah. Yeah. We only really had one scene in season two, so I think they maybe got confused and rewarded him for season one. No, it's a great got, story. Yes, but I, you know what? It's a, it's his total body of work, and yeah, you know, you yeah, he's really a magnificent actor. He really is. And I've been so busy this year; he hasn't had time to work because he's been watching the children. So it's his and turn. so what's that like? By oh the way, my goodness. Well, you know, I was in Thailand from I think first week of February mm -hmm. until July. Right. And I came when I landed. I was on the Gilded Age set 48 hours later. Oh boy. So I went from bathing suits and sarong to corsets and high heels and a wig, which was right. whiplash. And then, you know, when I was away for that first six weeks, we just realized it was impossible. And now I have, I have two nannies. Yes. At least. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my children are being raised by I'm two with, I'm with Tracy. Nannies. I'm with him. Yeah, you got to have It's help. very tough. Well, it takes three people to raise one child. It That's right. It takes six people to raise two, and then it goes up exponentially from there. That's it's very right. hard. <laughs> if you can, you know, and we have the means, thank goodness, but. All right, we need to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about when sisters don't get along. Stick around. three of us. I didn't even know it was between us. Regardless, she lives here. You live far away. It makes sense for me to be the one to step out for a while. Sorry, he's going to die and you will not be here and you'll never forgive me. I'm sorry. I don't want you to leave. I want the three of us to figure something out, some way that we can do what we can to get along, at least for now. I thought we were just fine. You and I? That was a surprise. see a clip from this movie, I'm like, okay, Carrie Coon playing all of us in his three daughters. And it's actually, I know it's weird to say, but it's actually very funny. Yeah. It's a funny movie. It's not maudlin because we all know when our families are going through something, it's very important to have a sense of humor. Right. And Aza captures that feeling of that liminal space you're in when you're keeping vigil, mm -hmm. that pre-grieving time in such a beautiful way. And I'm, and people are seeing themselves in all three sisters, which mm. I think is really wonderful. But these are three very estranged yes, sisters. Yes, and very different women, very
very different actresses as well playing right. those parts. But, um, you know, we shot this film in about, I think, 17 days. Wow. Oh, wow. With three days of rehearsal, Ozzy knew exactly how much money, how much time he needed, and he hand-delivered the scripts to each of us. He came to my house. And there was no digital copy. Nobody knew we were making it. There was no announcement. He said, the world will know we have made it when it is an object we can deliver to the world. And then it was very well received at Toronto last year. That's incredible. I, it was incredible. Did you shoot it in sequence? We shot it in order, which again... That's so rare. Never that never do. happens. No. And I mean, on Gilded Age, I might shoot from three episodes in one day. And so it's very unusual to have, to actually live through the story as you're telling it. And what that yields is surprises for us at the end. And we just, it was just so gratifying to do. It feels theatrical, but I think because it's so language forward and because we, we did it in order. But like I say, that clip doesn't really capture the tone of right. the film. Natasha Leone, a marvelous comic actor, mm. yes. doing such deep and gorgeous work in this film. Um, Lizzie Olsen, who a lot of people know from Marvel, but of course she's an extraordinary talent. She is. And we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg of what she's capable of. She's only 35, and I feel like this is gives you a taste of some of that really interesting indie work she's been doing her whole career. Yeah. And, and it was just, it was so gratifying to be with them. And I just hope people... I, th I hope people find it cathartic to mm. see this film because I think a lot of people are oh. are straddling childcare and the and end of life yes. issues with their parents, and yes. I've never seen it dealt with in this way. It's so relatable. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm such a Katie. I'm such a <laughs> yeah. Crazy. His three daughters opens in select theaters on Friday and will be on Netflix on Friday. So what is it you've decided to do instead of age? Uh, I don't know. I should take a tip from you. Look I at mean, you. No, I, honestly, no. I, congratulations are in order. Yes. You became an honorary citizen of Korea. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Of uh, Seoul? Of Seoul, yeah. Of Seoul, yeah. No. Of Seoul. Yeah, no, which is a, a, an important distinction. Like, it's I, a, yes. <laughs> so you don't get, uh, like, do you get a special... Like, uh, Any I don't know, like a special <laughs> yeah. line at the airport? Uh, yeah, subway pass. Uh, no, I, you know, I thought, you know, oh, this is great because I traveled to Korea a lot. I was actually there for a bunch this year and I thought, oh, this will get me through immigration faster That's when I get I into mean. the yeah. airport. Yeah. But nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. We had a really beautiful ceremony. They gave you me a, a, a nice piece of paper, <laughs> uh, a little sash, like a pageant queen, but that's it. Uh, <laughs> anything they have in Korea that you wish they would have here in America? America. There are actually two things that I think, tell me, I wish they had here. Very small things, but super important. In elevators in Korea, yes. when you press a button and you mistakenly press that floor, if you press that button again, it cancels. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I don't it's such a simple thing, simple right? Simple thing. And simple. I, Why don't we have that? I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's, I don't think it's that technologically difficult, but no. it makes life so What's much easier. Thing? Here's the other thing. In restaurants in Korea, when you go there, every table has a little button yes. that you press when you want a server. So you're not, you're not, hello, excuse me, excuse me. Bill, the, yeah, the Bill, bill. you literally press a button within 30 seconds, someone is there. How can I help you? Do they have a button you press for them to come over and ask you how the first few bites are tasting? <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. And some restaurants definitely need that. Yeah. Um, you hear the Kim family has taken to pickleball. Yeah, yeah, I know you're true. a big tennis. You know you're a big tennis, tennis fan. Yeah, I, I am. No, we are. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's kind of converted to pickleball now. My son, who played a lot of tennis, is playing sure. pickleball. Uh, he's out starting to play pickleball tournaments, and my my wife is. I, I don't use this word very often, but obsessed uh, wow. with pickleball. Once a day, sometimes twice, twice a day. Twice a day. No yeah, kidding. So, but I think it's great, though. Like, you know, she, it, it, anything that gets people active out of the house and, you know, especially, you know, when you're not 18 or 21 and you're looking for something physical to do, pickleball's a real, a real, uh, a great opportunity to exercise a little bit and compete. socialize. And yeah, compete. and compete. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, it, the thing that makes me nervous about pickleball is mm. every time Mark and I, like, observe a group of people playing pickleball, <laughs> they are all wearing knee braces, ankle braces, <laughs> shoulder braces, and elbow braces. 
<laughs> well, that is the other and thing. And that's the one thing that scares us. I love yeah. it. No. Have you guys played? Uh, we, we took a lesson. We took a oh, lesson. Yeah. We took a lesson. <laughs> okay. We took a lesson. <laughs> We're as bad at pickleball as we are at tennis. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Well, you guys are so athletic. I'd be surprised if you, We're gonna you know, try couldn't again. pick it up. Yeah, We're you gonna guys try will pick again. it up quickly. All I'm right. Sure. Tell us about this play, this Broadway play, mm. Yellow Face. So, uh, it's uh, at, at the Todd Haynes Theater with the Roundabout Theater Company, mm. and uh, it's uh, written by David Henry Huang, who wrote M. Butterfly and mm -hmm. won a Tony for it. Amazing. Uh, it's a comedy uh, of, about mistaken racial identity. Now, uh, I play David Henry Huang. He puts himself in some of his plays, and uh, it's, a true, it's based on true life events where he protested a show where an actor was coming in, uh, a white actor was coming in to play an Asian role as the lead. And uh, he protested that show. Uh, he was unsuccessful. And so he decided to write a play about that experience. And that play, and this is true, uh, he, that he wrote, he actually mistakenly also cast a white actor no. <laughs> no. as an Asian. That's funny. Uh, Hello, back to Watson, Kushun the drawing, drawing there, Apni Kurtu Barbell, got wrong like me, got a show like me, Kyo Kurban, Shira Shia Kurbo, Abushu Birota, Puru Predicted Bolbana, Nanava, Shawaike. Let's get a knot, let's get a pen now. Let's get a pen now. Let's get a knot. 